The day we're taking a look at these NBA matches, which are happening on Wednesday, November 30th, 2022, and giving you match breakdowns, betting tips and predictions in general on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes. Before we dive into our video, don't forget to subscribe and push that notification bell to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos. Also, check out our perks and join the High Stakes membership. Joining the High Stakes membership is easy, is cheap, but it will help a lot in the growth process of this channel. Plus if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you, by becoming a member of the High Stakes Patreon, you will have access to our best team picks, total picks, parlay picks and much more. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting predictions that ends up costing you a lot of time and money. Join the HighStack.es Patreon now and get the best betting picks. Going back to our video we will give you two betting picks for each game, a team pick and a total pick based on facts and detailed explanation. So make sure to watch our videos till the end, so you don't miss any of our picks. New York Knicks vs Milwaukee Bucks. I will pick the Milwaukee Bucks, and I am going to lay the points, minus 5.5. They are the better defensive team and they will be able to score efficiently against this New York defense. The Knicks have the 23rd lowest adjusted defensive rating, and they are allowing the 26th most points per game. The Bucks have continued to struggle to shoot consistently from deep, but they will be able to attack the basket and score inside throughout this game. Milwaukee is still scoring the 15th most points per game, and I see Antetokounmpo attacking throughout this one. The Knicks don't have anyone to guard him, as he will continue to attack the basket. New York has also lost four of their last five games, as they have not been hot as of late. Milwaukee has won two games in a row, and they dominated the Knicks in their first matchup of the season. They will continue to lock up on the defensive end of the court, as they won't allow New York to score enough points to cover this spread. Milwaukee has the lowest adjusted defensive rating in the NBA, and they are surrendering the fifth least amount of points per contest. They will contest shots near the rim and on the perimeter, as they will continue to smother the Knicks. Milwaukee is the better overall team, and they will lock up on the defensive end of the court. Pick the Bucks and lay the points, minus 5.5 points. This series has gone over in the last two meetings and five of the last nine. Both teams come in with a combined average of 227.1 points per game. Milwaukee has upped their scoring of late, averaging 115 points per game in their last five. New York has done the same, scoring 115.4 points per game in their last five. This series has definitely been set up with some lower totals over the year, so take advantage of two teams playing better offense now than they had been earlier. Take the over 227 points. Boston Celtics vs Miami Heat. The Celtics have been unstoppable on the offensive end and play a Miami team that has trouble putting up big points and doesn't have the defense to slow down the Celtics. Harrow's insertion into the starting lineup this season strengthens the Heat offensively, but vastly reduces their defensive effectiveness. The fact that Butler will be unavailable for this game does not enhance the Heat's chances to slow down either Brown or Tatum in this game. Either forward will exploit the best matchup, particularly one that involves being covered by Harrow. This one will get away from the Heat quickly, and the Celtics will cruise to another double-digit win against a Miami team that does not match up well with Boston take the Celtics. The last matchup between these two teams in October came in at a total of 227. The Celtics are torching nets, scoring 129.3 points per game over their last four. Miami is averaging 103.4 points in their last four, which isn't a whole lot, but is plenty to get us there so long as Boston holds up their end. The over has his in six of the last eight games between these two teams, and we expect it again. Take the over 223.5 points. New Orleans Pelicans vs Toronto Raptors. In the win over the Cavaliers, it certainly helped matters that the Raptors had their best player, Pascal Siakam, back in the fold. Siakam had been out for a few weeks with an injury, but he looked good to go on Monday as he had 18 points, 11 rebounds and 5 assists in the 188 win over the Cavs. Aga Nunabi led the Raptors with 20 points, while Gary Trent added 14, and Fred Van Blee chipped in with 13 points. The Raptors average 110.8 points per game, which ranks 19th in the NBA. 
they give up 108.5 points per game, which rank 7th in the league. This is a tough spot for the Pelicans. While they are home, where they have only lost three times all year, they face a suddenly healthy and surging Raptors team that has back all of its key players. The Toronto Raptors have been in decent form as they've won four of their last six games overall, and they will be aiming for a third straight victory after taking down the Cavaliers in a 188 home win on Monday. Aga Nunabi led the team with 20 points on 8 of 13 shooting, Pascal Siakam added 18 points with 11 rebounds and 5 assists, while Fred Van Vliet chipped in with 13 points and 5 assists. As a team, the Raptors shot 44% from the field and 12 of 28 from the three-point line, but this win was more about their defense, as they were always in control after restricting the Cavaliers to just 19 points in the second quarter. Meanwhile, the New Orleans Pelicans have been in great form as they've won six of their last eight games, and they will be looking to stay hot after outlasting the Thunder in a 105-101 home win on Monday. Zion Williamson led the team with 23 points, 8 rebounds and 8 assists, Trey Murphy added 20 points, while Lowe's A. Alvarado chipped in with 15 points. As a team, the Pelicans shot 44% from the field, just 9 of 32 from the three-point line, and they committed 22 turnovers, but they were scrappy on the defensive end as they held the Thunder to just 37% shooting for the game by keeping their starters in check. The big boost is Siakam, who is off the injured list. But also, Scotty Barnes and Van Vliet, who have spent time on the shelf, are back in the fold. We haven't seen that much of a fully loaded Raptors team, so look for this unit to do some damage. Meanwhile, the Pelicans have been bitten by the injury bug, with McCollum out and Ingram questionable. So, while New Orleans is a tough place to play, I like the Raptors to cover here. Take the Raptors. The Pelicans rank top 5 in the NBA in points per game, 116.7, field goal percentage, 48.4, three-point percentage, 37.6, steals, 8.7, defensive rating, 109.6, net rating, 5.3, points off turnovers, 19.3, and points in the paint, 55. New Orleans is also within the top third in rebounds, 44.9, assists, 27.1, assist to turnover ratio, 1.83, offensive rating, 114.4, and fast break points, 14.9. The over is 11-9 for the Pelicans this season and 6-4 when the Raptors play on the road, so in a tough one to call, I'm actually leaning toward this number being broken. Combined, these two teams average 227.5 points per game. The total has gone over in five of Toronto's last six games against Western Conference competition and six of New Orleans's last eight when facing the Eastern Conference. The Pelicans also hit the over in two of their last three games and have only seen a total below 225 points twice in their last 10 contests. Take over 224.5 points.